Good morning. What is up? We're here for four hours and nobody. Nobody. It's quiet. Hopefully there's not too much echo in here because usually there's a little bit more action going on. But today is a Tech Talk Tuesday that's gonna get aired on Wednesday. And this one is long overdue. This is part two of our suspension knowledge video. If you have not watched the uh, highly, um, uh, well, y'all really liked it. Um, I'm spacing on the word right now. You guys got really excited about it, about rebound. Uh, if you have not watched the rebound video, click up here, watch that first. I think it's a fantastic little uh, basic knowledge on understanding what rebound does, how it can benefit you, and how it can give you more control on the trail. And this is part two of that because with every fork and rear shock and there's a red knob but that's rebound what what's what's this blue knob okay blue knob is for compression so we're gonna dive in we're gonna talk about compression because I think this one is even more confusing for some folks than rebound they look at it and they're like I, I, I don't know I just open lockout open close open close what is all of it what's this three position click light, medium, firm, tr climb, trail, descend, all the buzzwords. Let's dive in. Start first with smaller travel bikes and normal compression. So you might see that on the top of the fork, there's that blue knob, and it probably has three to five to eight clicks of compression. Now as we dive further down that dial, right, turning it clockwise, you're gonna feel the fork is going to get stiffer. That's what we generally look for when we're hitting a climb, crank that sucker all the way up, and then when you get to the top of the climb, crank it all the way back. Now on the climbs, absolutely all the way, full firm is the way to go. If we are riding a trail that has extremely fun, flowy, bobsled style turns, if you live here locally, think Grand Bay, but that type of a terrain where it's super buffed out, really smooth, really flowy, nothing you can do, no sharp turns, everything is just going like this, right? Picture yourself ripping that trail. We're gonna wanna dial that compression up a little bit. Now what that's gonna do is that's gonna give the rider more support. This is different from air pressure. Now this is something you might go ding, light bulb. A lot of folks complain about the fork always wants to dive when they go through these turns. There's a lot of G-force, all of our body weight, all of our inertias want to squat the bike in that turn and suspension compresses. Then what we do is we don't want that, so we jack up our air pressure, and then we limit our travel, right? And then we have this really, really rigid shock that doesn't work very well, it beats us up. Again, like we talked about in rebound, we have this air pressure that's far too high for our body weight and degrades the ride quality of the bike. Put that shock pump back on that air pressure gauge, put it back to your correct pressure for your body weight. Now, let's use that compression dial to keep that shock from, from uh, squatting and it turns hitting that G out section where it's all your forces, your body weight, the G force, your speed, it's wanting to squash you in that turn and you're gonna keep from quote unquote diving into that turn. So dial that up a little bit. Don't go all the way firm, but a nice you know two, three, four clicks into it. You're gonna feel a drastic difference on how that bike wants to always stand up and it's got more support for you. It's not firmer, it's just more, more backing mm, behind you. And it's all a matter of picturing the trail. When you have trails that go like this, have very little big bumps, and have a lot of smooth, flowy type of a scenario, dial that low speed compression up or dial that compression up a little bit to give the bike more support. Now, flip the scale the other direction and we're hitting down a trail that's very high speed, that's super chattery, maybe is pretty straight, even if it's got some turns, but the terrain is very rough on the surface, we're gonna wanna dial that back. We wanna open the shock up as much as possible because we're not concerned about it diving because the trail is generally pretty straight. We want it to move as much as possible. Give it the most uh, open breathing room. That's where that compression adjustment needs to get dialed all the way back. If you're curious about all of this and you're like, I gotta, I gotta figure it out myself, hit that pause button right now, go grab your bike, check it out. If not, watch the entire video, go check it out afterward. Maybe watch it again because this gets pretty confusing. Trust me. We've talked about some short travel cross country uh, now let's go to the trail world, this particular bike uh, and other brands. You can have black stanchions, you can have gold stanchions, but 
you want to now look at a trail fork that's going to have low speed compression on the top of it. So we have our three click, boom, the main adjustments. And then inside of that, there's this little tiny micro dial that will say LSC or low speed compression or trail tune or any of those things. But trust me, that little blue knob is low speed compression. You're probably asking yourself, well, Cody, I don't ride slow. I'm, I shred so hard. Why well, don't I need a low speed compression adjustment? Because I don't ever go slow or low speed, right? It's not wheel traveling speed. And I think that's a large misconception about this. Low speed is referring to the shock travel speed. How slow that's moving through its travel versus how hard it's moving through its travel. Think like this. Slow, slow, fast, fast big hit, right? That's the difference. It's not wheel traveling speed, it's shock movement speed. On the rear, slow, 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 right? Think, if you're from around here, think connector trail, think Granite Bay, just those slow compressions, right? And then think Salmon Falls, think Confluence, just wah, 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 just you know? This, uh, these shock adjustments are much harder to see on video, so I highly recommend go grabbing your bike, dial it in, trying to get a feel for it, and we'll walk you through it. We're gonna wanna start with it full open. We're just gonna wanna get a feel for how it feels as we slowly compress the fork, okay? A couple times, give yourself a good baseline, right? Now, just for effect, dial it all the way clockwise, increasing that low speed compression, ramping it up and do the same thing. You're gonna feel that much firmer. It's almost like there's more air pressure in there, right? Ding! Light bulb goes on. This is now giving you, the rider, more support in those turns, more support off of hitting those sweet jumps. So as we come through that turn, the shock is slowly compressing, low speed, squatting into that turn. We need more support in that, so crank that sucker up. Now, Cody. If I dial up that low speed compression all the time, I take a big hit, what happens? Now, the shock knows that if the shock is moving at a high rate of speed, if that stanchion is compressing quickly, that rear shock is taking a big hit, that's a high speed compression hit, and the shock knows to open up all its valves, has built in mechanisms for this, and bam, it feels somewhat more close to what you're expecting on bigger hits. That's, in a nutshell, low speed compression. Hope that helps if you have more questions. And as I said in the last video, this is a rabbit hole of knowledge. I love it though, it's so awesome. But uh, there are so many questions to be asked, so many answers to be had, let me know. There's definitely more to this. I'll be working on more Tech Talk Tuesdays on suspension because you guys love the one on rebound. Hopefully you like this one. That's it for the day. We're gonna jam to some work. The guys are gonna be here and I don't know. Well, we're actually pretty early. But uh, anyways, we'll see you tomorrow. That's gonna be a wrap from Kinetic. Over and out. Peace.